Hi guys, and welcome to episode 80 of the Crochet Cakes podcast, a podcast about crochet and my crafty life in general. How have you guys been doing? I hope you are doing well. Today is May 16th, I believe. It's Sunday, that's all I'm sure about, which means tomorrow is Monday, and I don't know where life is taking me because I imagine, like many of you, I'm just taking life one day at a time right now. So I hope you guys have been well and that you've been crafting if you are able to do so and otherwise keeping safe and healthy. Um, I don't know what week of quarantine this is for me. Um, oh my god, I'm not wearing any earrings. I'll be right back. Sorry, uh, I just realized I hadn't put any jewelry on and if you've been following my podcast for a while, you knew that I am a big jewelry person. I would normally be wearing very huge, chunky jewelry, but we're calling this one an informal podcast because I cannot believe that it's been two weeks since the last time I sat here and just chatted with you about my going-ons and my crafting and everything. So uh, what's changed in those two weeks? I pulled out my back out of place again. So that's not good. I've done a little bit of sewing, which is good, but uh, I was trying to sew some dungarees, some, you know, um, in Spanish we call them mamelucos. I don't know what you call them in English, but they're basically jumpsuits, right? They, they have the, the straps here and you put a shirt under them and yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I was trying to sew some of those, just, you know, got the courage to actually sit down and I sewed the pants and I, I believe I've sewn them to, 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 together now but now that I've done that I'm looking at it and it's a mystery and I don't know where, how to proceed. I certainly miss having someone next to me helping me interpret the sewing instructions so I can sew better but other than that I've been doing a bit of online shopping which I really shouldn't be doing, and a lot, a lot of reading. I've read printed books, I've read fan fiction, I've read ebooks. Uh, the last time I talked to you, I believe I talked about The Vine Witch, and I finished, I bought The Discovery of Witches. I started reading it, but I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about that one. And I've done a lot of baking, as I showed you at the beginning of today's episode. There's uh, fresh bread almost weekly, sometimes twice a week if we are in a very bread mood and eat it all. I made delicious brownies. Um, if I remember the recipe I used to make the brownies, I will link it down below. If not, I'm sorry. I did spend, so when I decided to make brownies, I spent 20 minutes looking for the perfect brownie recipe because I didn't have chocolate chips and I don't actually like chocolate chips in my brownies. And I really wanted the brownie to be fudgy, but have that crispy top. Anyway, I took no pictures of those brownies. So why am I just, you know, teasing you about brownies? Brownies are delicious, and oh my god, if you heat them up and you put a dollop of ice cream, even better. And the reason I made brownies was because um, the last week was Mother's Day week in the United States and in Puerto Rico because we celebrate Mother's Day the same day as the United States. So I wanted to join mom because she was going to be eating chocolate cake for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I wanted to join her, but I didn't really feel like eating a cake. So I thought brownies. Brownies are made of chocolate and I could eat those breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that's what I did. <laughs> and it me and my husband, we actually did that, and I think it was actually on the Monday after Mother's Day that we, we fought over the brownies. But, you know, it wasn't really a fight. There were two left. We were just fighting with our conscience about whether or not we should eat those brownies. Other things that have been going on, um, lots of concerns, obviously, over if we're going back to work or not, how we should approach going back to work. I am... I've noticed that some people are very lax now that they can go back to work and I don't think I'm going to be one of those people. Frankly, I I don't want to get the virus and I, I don't want to give it to anybody else if I am a carrier. And I've been doing a lot of 
not online shopping, but online window shopping. I've been scrolling through Etsy and eBay for vintage finds because I miss thrifting. Uh, that's about the only thing I miss. I miss thrifting and being able to visit my neighbors on Saturdays because we used to get together to just have drinks and a chat and our dogs would play together. So those are the things I miss. And of course, <laughs> I cannot tell you how much I miss my family. Uh, by now, we would have probably seen them at least once. And with my one year wedding anniversary coming up, I, I'm missing them all the more because last year, this time I was with them, uh, we were just crocheting succulents and putting last minute details together for the wedding. And I just, I miss them. I even miss my brother and my sister because why wouldn't you? I miss all my family, but I'm sure I'm, I'm not I'm not the only person in that vote and I don't want to bring you guys down because I don't know about you, but I'm watching podcasts to be upbeat and crafty and feel not so alone, so I'm sure that's why you tuned into this podcast if you tuned in. So what do I have to share with you today now that I've just kind of walked you through my daily life of ignore back pain? walk the dog if my husband hasn't walked him, cook, clean. Cleaning has kind of been like, I haven't done that much. I'm, I mean, I'm sticking to my normal cleaning routine, but I haven't been obsessively cleaning, except this past weekend. Um, <laughs> it started on Saturday, and I still don't think the house is clean enough, so after I podcast today, and I'll edit the podcast, I'll probably go back to cleaning. But yes, what do I have to share with you today? Today I have to share with you um, a blog post and a finished object. I only have two things to share with you because both of those things, I'm gonna talk about them for a long time. So I wanna be able to dedicate time and not rush through the process, but I also don't wanna take up too much of your time. So I'm gonna crack on with my finished object, which will be a blog post soon because it's written up. I just have to take pictures of it. And then we will chat about crochet socks because you guys had requested that I talk about crochet socks and my experience making them and my tips and tricks for making crochet socks. So I wrote a blog post about that, which of course will be linked down below with all the links of where you can find me and all that stuff. And then I'll chat to you guys about that. But first, finished object. So, it's right behind me if you are watching. If you are listening, I'll just explain the layout to you. Behind me, laying on top of my chair, is a blue square and a cream stripe. Now, the keen-eyed among you may kind of recognize these squares as a video tutorial that I uploaded last week, which I know I had uploaded before, but I wanted better lighting. I did have somebody comment that they couldn't see what I was doing because of the angle, but if that's a problem, then I also have the other tutorial, uh, which just had bad lighting in my opinion, and I also have a blog post with pictures so you can make this square yourself. Now what I'm talking about is a modified vintage, I call it the vintage, vintage granny flower motif. It's a really long name, but it's essentially what it is because it is a, a motif that starts out like a circle so the inside kind of looks like a flower and then you just work and you square it off. And so it has a bit of that granny shape and the, you know, increases at the corners. And anyway, I just, I'm going to show you what it is because I don't think I'm explaining it well. But this is a blanket. Sorry about that guys, that was my dog Ichido. He made his presence known because I don't know. But we are moving on. Blanket, that's where I left off. So I have actually completed a blanket. This is the first blanket I have completed since 2017? And we're in 2020. So this is the first blanket I've completed in three years. <laughs> I know, but me and blankets, guys, I'm not good with long-term projects. I, I'm more of a product crocheter, and I am trying to change that because with all the joint pain and back pain I've been experiencing, 
I'm just thankful that I can actually get some crochet time in, especially because I'm trying to work towards my goal of becoming a full-time blogger and crochet designer for my brand, Crochet Cakes. So, you know, there's, yes, there's things we want to do, but we have to work them in the way that we can. And sometimes that means we can crochet for 30 minutes a day. Um, luckily, I've been able to crochet for 30 minutes at a time, not 30 minutes a day. I think I'd uh, cry. But anyway, so I'm trying to change my thoughts on more of the product and have it be more about the process and the yarn I'm using and how I'm crocheting. I've been super, super vigilant on how I crochet and I've been watching all of, a lot of videos where people sh um, crochet tutorials to see how they crochet and see if I can find a way that's more comfortable for me. But anyway, this is actually a finished blanket and this was a bit, a bit of a product and a process. It was both. It was both types of crochet. I really wanted to finish a blanket, but the yarn I was using, I was so in love with both of the yarns I used in this project. So I'm going to hold a section of the blanket up for you. Essentially, this I'm calling the Summer Sorbet Blanket. It is a crochet blanket made up of nine granny squares, granny motifs, and each motif measures about 13 by 13, and it is made using a 5 millimeter crochet hook and Knit Picks Snuggle Puff yarn. So what I did was that I created nine squares, as I said, and I joined them to make a granny strip, essentially, a, a motif strip row all on their own. I'm really trying to work with you guys here, but... As I have yet to take any pictures, I, um, well, right, uh, the pictures didn't go in now, the pictures go in when I edit the podcast, so Clarissa, remember to take pictures. <laughs> but anyway, I used a combination of Knit Picks Snuggle Puff. The square I'm holding up right now is in the color Joey, and this is kind of a salmon pink color. And I joined them, as you can see, because I'm holding the back, just using a single crochet join. And then I, um, how do I say this? I broke off the granny strips by doing a cream stripe in squished single crochet, which, oh, it's such, it's such a lovely stitch. It's the stitch I used for my Endor Moon socks. If you don't know what those are, I'll link them down below, but they're a crochet sock that I released on May 4th. Uh, to honor Star Wars Day, and they were inspired by the Endor moon scene in Return of the Jedi. So when I made the socks, I fell in love with that stitch, and so I used it for this blanket. The squished single crochet stitch to me looks a lot uh, like little seeds, but if you stretch it, they kind of look like a chain or a grid, kind of a, a mesh grid but with more body to it, if that makes sense. So the cream stripe, you can, if you're watching, you can see it doesn't have as much drape as the little squares that are made in Knit Picks Snuggle Puff. The cream stripes are made in Lion Brand Comfy Cotton. And the reason I chose a different yarn is twofold. I found the Knit Picks Snuggle Puff is exactly as the name suggests. It is a super snuggly yarn made for just cozying up in the summer or those summer nights where it's cool but you don't really want to blanket on top of you. This one is perfect because the square is very holy so if you wanted you can poke some toes out <laughs> through here um, but it's also very drapey and the Knit Picks Snuggle Puff, the composition is, it's a cotton nylon blend. I don't remember the exact ratio of it, but it's very airy and light and fluffy because of the way it's been blended together. It's essentially kind of a single ply yarn, so you will have a lot of that fuzziness, especially with the nylon that's in the blanket. And then the comfy cotton from Lion Brands has a lot more structure to it. So that's what I wanted for the border. I wanted a yarn with more structure that would be able to hold the blanket together. And I made three rows with the granny 
um, squares and then I divided them with a cream stripe as you can sort of see here so this cream stripe is about four inches um, tall and then the squares are 13 by 13 and the border is three inches I used two uh, cakes of lion brand comfy cotton in total one was completely used for the border and the other one was used to join to make the cream stripes and for the first three rounds of the border if you uh, had extra of this yarn lying around you could of course make the border bigger I just didn't want to write a pattern where I would have you buy three cakes of the lion brand comfy cotton and then have more than 50 grams left over of the third cake because you finished on row 12 and you only needed three more rows so um, that's why I decided to just stick with the two balls but this blanket which you'll be seeing pictures of because I can't really show it well in person is just I'm so proud of it I love the colors actually the least favorite color is the blue. It looks a little bit too babyish, but other than that, I love the color combos and it just feels so snuggly on. I had to wrestle it away from my husband because I finished it while we were, well, I finished weaving in the ends while we were watching a movie and he got a little bit chilly and he just took it off me and put it, you know, wrapped himself up in the blanket. Like, uh, no, sir, I have not even shown that in the podcast. You are not allowed to use it right now. So I just need to cut off the yarn and finish weaving in like three ends, I think. And then that'll be it for this blanket. As soon as the pictures are up, I will be sharing the pattern with you because it is written up. It's more of a recipe because... I had already published a previous blog post with the instructions to make the vintage uh, granny flower motif, but I just wanted to show you what you could do with the vintage granny motif if you really wanted to. And also I have another version of, not the same blanket, but another version of a blanket made with the vintage granny motif. And it's huge. That one I just used four squares of the vintage granny flower motif and then I did a granny stitch border around it. It's uh, I think that one's just more square like so I don't think it's as comfortable to snuggle under and it was made in Bernat Chunky which is just 100% acrylic yarn but I did make it in an 8mm crochet hook if I'm not mistaken. So it's very cut, very tight stitch. It's not as loose and flowy as the Burnett Snuggle Puff, which I'm a lot happier with. I think that was the perfect yarn to use for this blanket. So I hope you guys like it. I will, of course, let you know on Instagram uh, when I publish it. And you know what? Maybe I'll even like put, post it on the community thing that's here on YouTube as well. So if you follow me on YouTube, you will get an I think you get an alert when I post on community community board. I hope so. So if you don't know, because I didn't say it, crochet cakes everywhere, and all the links you need will be down below, including a knit crate link if you're interested in yarny subscriptions. So yeah, let's just all have fun crafting together. And I hope that I did the blanket justice by showing it to you in the pictures because I know I didn't do it justice pulling it up and showing it to you in weird constricted angles. So we're gonna be swiftly moving on to crochet socks. I don't have a finished crochet sock to share with you. I don't even have a crochet sock in progress to share with you, but I do have plenty of crochet socks. Now, lately I've been really into designing crochet socks. So far, I've only designed the Endor Moon sock pattern, but I did have a rough draft for a sock design that I submitted to Knit Crate, and if they accept the design then I will be moving forward and making the sock and if they don't then I'll still make the sock and post it free on the blog as all my patterns are. So what can I tell you about crochet socks? <sighs> Obviously we need to go back to episode one of the Crochet Cakes podcast or episode two of the Crochet Cakes podcast and discuss 
knitting socks because uh, the first podcast I ever started watching was the Bakery Bears podcast and Kay loves knitting crochet socks and she loved it so much that she kind of rubbed off on me and I decided I need, need blah, 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 mm -hmm, excuse me, I needed to try and knit a pair of socks. So the first crochet, the, the first socks I ever knit were with a completely horrible yarn for crochet socks. The yarn itself wasn't bad, just for crochet socks, it was not good. It was a cotton silk nylon blend from, oh my god, this, I think it was Valley Yarns, no, I know it's a company, it's a yarn company that doesn't exist anymore, which is really sad because they had really good yarns. But anyway, I was knitting this pair of DK weight socks with a 3.25 millimeter DPNs and they were wooden DPNs. It, it was just horrible. And then after that, I believe I made two more pairs of knit socks before, or three. I made one for my sister, one for myself, and one for my brother. And that was before I ever attempted to crochet socks. While I was learning to knit socks, mom decided that if you could knit it, you could crochet it. So she started on a crochet sock adventure and she purchased a Craftsy class. It's not called Craftsy anymore. I honestly don't remember what the website is called. But I think they sold the company. It's blue something. So mom purchased a class from there and it was by Ron Strong and it was just a simple crochet sock. And then she purchased Ron Strong's book, Step Into Crochet. It will be linked down below if you have no idea what I'm talking about. And it just kind of went on from there. So when I saw her crochet socks, I, I wanted to make some because she was crocheting them faster than I could knit them. And I wanted speed. So it was, I believe, 2017. Because that's when Hurricane Maria visited the island of Puerto Rico and I'm pretty sure that's when I started to crochet socks. So the first pair of socks I crocheted, people say they are sacrificial, but I really feel that if you've knit socks before or you understand the construction of a sock, they won't feel so sacrificial. They still won't be perfect, Don't. that's not what I'm saying, but they'll be usable and they'll last a long time. So I'm getting my sock blockers out to show you. And this is the first pair of socks I ever crocheted. This is the Ralston socks by Ron Strong and they are um, basically a combination of a shell pattern, raised stitches, and then a very interesting back cuff with, um, I think it's front post, back post. Yeah, front post, back post stitches. So. If you are really, really new to socks, I will go over the basics with you. So a sock is composed of a toe, the foot, the gusset, the heel, um, the instep, which is this part, it's the widest part of your foot, so it corresponds with the heel, and this is the part you need to worry about when you're crocheting socks. You need to make sure that you can get the sock past this point, okay? And then we have just the leg, and you can have a cuff or not have a cuff. These Ralston socks don't have a cuff, and they're still honestly one of my favorite sock designs. Now, as you can see, if you're watching, the sock doesn't really fit well in the sock blocker. It's a little bit bigger than the sock blocker. And why is that? Well. It has to do with the way crochet stretches. Now, if you are a knitter, you'll know that knitting stretches this way. Mm -hmm. But you can see I'm pulling at the stitches and they're not, the sock isn't really stretching. It's stretching when I go this way. So crochet stitches stretch vertically while knitting stretches, I call it horizontal, horizontally. It has more of a horizontal stretch. So, that does mean that when you are knitting socks, you can have them be 
thinner than what crochet socks come out like. Crochet socks essentially look like they will look when you wear them on your foot. This one looks a little bit thinner because of its construction. It's got a very nice shelf stitch, which gives it a bit of a stretch, and it also has a gusset increases, and then we have a heel, which is very tall heel, and it makes for a very comfortable sock. So those are the basic sock parts, essentially. Now, when it comes to crochet, those sock parts don't change. What changes is the measurement. And it's due to the fact that, as I said, crochet stretches vertically. Excuse me. Sorry, I had to sneeze. So when we are thinking that crochet stretches vertically, we need to account for that when we are designing a pattern, which means that when you are crocheting socks, you are definitely going to need to take your measurements. And your measurements will essentially be the length of your foot. That's the first measurement you need. The length of your foot, mine is 9.75 inches long. And your desired sock length will be approximately one inch less than your foot length. So for me, my desired sock length is 8.75. Sometimes I take it down to eight and a half. It really depends on the stitch combination I'm using, how stretchy it is, and how close I can get to the 8.75 mark. Because if by, I don't know, maybe I'm using a really tall stitch and when I get to the make, I get to eight and a half and then maybe I'll get to nine inches. So you don't want to be at the nine inches, you want to be at the 8.75 or as close to 8.75 as you can get. Why? Because as I said, that's gonna account for the stretch. Now crochet socks, should never be tight to begin with because then you won't be able to get it through the widest part of your foot which is this instep. Now I'm going to show you um, these socks and these socks look really wide, right? They look just clunky and not at all like knit socks because they aren't. But if we are talking about getting them on our foot, boom, they fit perfectly. Um, in fact, I think my gauge was just too loose for this uh, sock, but I didn't want to rip it back because I do love how the sock came out. These are just simple socks that are done with a wedge toe and squish, no, extended single crochets for the whole body of the sock because I find that when you're working with stripes or self-striping yarn, Extended single crochet is perfect. It really shows off the natures of the yarn when you're working with it. And I'm gonna exemplify this by pulling out the first pair of crochet socks I've ever designed. And these are the Vintage Waves socks. These are designed for self-striping yarn. But bear in mind, the yarn that I used has a count of 120 inches per stripe. So that's very short repeat. You could definitely get this look by alternating your um, yarn colors. So say I had white and black separate, I could just get the same look because since we're working in a spiral, you don't really have to cut your yarn when you're done with a round, you just carry it up. So this also has a little, um, I call it the waves stitch, but it's just, single crochet, chain two single crochet in um, the established pattern that you can check out if you've never seen these socks. And I designed a toe for these socks and I call it my U-toe uh, because it does look like the U-shape. I've used these socks uh, several times, but I just love them. But you can see they look really wide. They don't look like they would fit your foot. But that's because crochet doesn't have the horizontal stretch that knitting has. So you need to make a sock that without stretching that much horizontally will actually fit your foot. And that's uh, where, why the difference in width for crochet and knitting socks is essentially. 
So those are just some basic differences between crochet and knit socks. I went a little bit more into detail with it on the blog, but one of the key things really to keep in mind is your gauge. If your gauge does not match the gauge of the designers, your sock will not come out the same. You'll still be able to make it, but you will have to make some changes, probably to the stitch counts, maybe to the row counts. Um, so in the example of the Vintage Waves crochet sock, I designed this using a very light fingering weight yarn. And then I also made them using Lion Brand's Manny Petty yarn, which is a more commercially available yarn, but it's a, um, I would say it's a thicker fingering weight than the Little Bean Loves yarn that I used to make the original sock. So what does this mean for the sock? Well, I actually ended up using a bigger hook, which you can tell one sock is wider than the other. Uh, for the original sock, I used a 3mm hook, and then for the Mani Petty sock, I used a 3.25mm hook, which is as high as I'll go in crocheting socks. Why did I do that? Because when I was crocheting the toe with a 3mm hook, I noticed that the fabric I was getting was very thick. There was almost no stretch to it. That is not good. You want there to be a little give to your fabric. So I switched to a 3.25 crochet hook and I actually, because I was using a bigger crochet hook, my gauge was different so I had to make less rows to get to my measurements and than I would have if I would have been making, in the, uh, making the sock in the same yarn that I had previously made. So those are just an example of some things you'll have to take into consideration when you are crocheting socks. Your gauge is really important and it can change depending on the yarn you're using. If a uh, designer called for Mani Petty yarn in their design and you're using indie dyed yarn, keep in mind you will probably have to make more rows to get to your um, desired sock length or something like that. So those are the things that I would say you have to keep in mind. Gauge your foot length and your desired sock length, which you should always remember that in crochet socks it's one inch less than your desired foot length. So <clears throat> for me that's 8.75 because that's an inch less than 9.75. I also have here an example of the same sock pattern worked up in, again, two different types of indie dyed yarn and two different yarn blends. This watermelon sock is my favorite and it's made with um, Little Bean Loves hand painted yarn and it's her 7525. It was a sock blank that I used to make this. This sock is also different because it uses, I have a knit cuff, because when you crochet a sock, some people say, and I, I'm kind of in agreement, the biggest failure is the cuff. The cuff can be very loose and baggy. Uh, a lot of people call it the baggy sock syndrome, baggy cuff syndrome. But when you knit the cuff, it kind of pulls it all in and you get a much nicer finish to your sock. I've done both and I don't mind either one. What I tend to do when I'm going to crochet the cuff is either go down a hook size to 2.75 or um, decrease a couple of stitches to just make sure that yes, I'll be able to get the sock over the end step, but I won't have a baggy cuff. So I'm going to put these watermelon socks for you in the sock blocker. And I just kind of also want to show you how length affects the fit of a crochet sock. This sock is a lot taller than all the other crochet socks I've shown you. These have all been shorties. Um, but this watermelon sock is not a shorty, as you can tell. I would say this leg is about 5 inches, maybe longer. And this sock is designed by Mind and Muse Crafts, Caroline from Mind and Muse Crafts. She designed these My Sweet Socks when I moved from home, which uh, it's 
very sad. But I want to show you these socks. Okay. So as you can see, the sock I'm holding up on my right is the watermelon sock, and it fits very, very well on the sock blocker. I think I had a tighter gauge back then, and it's there's no baggy cuff because I've knit the cuff, and it just flows really well. It doesn't look as baggy or saggy as some other crochet socks I've made. But here, I'm holding up, looking for a sock blocker. Here we go. The second version of this, my sweet socks that I made. This is a lot baggier. My gauge did not match the pattern in this one. It did match it with the watermelon sock. Um, and the yarn that I was using it here was a BFL nylon blend. I think, it, I believe it was 8020 BFL nylon instead of 7525 Superwash Merino. And it's also had high twist, which is a lot better for crochet because it shows off the stitches better. This one, this watermelon one did not have a high twist. And for the heel, I did the same heel that was specified in the pattern for both socks. And it's just that in the pair of shorties, I just did one cupcake stitch repeat. And in the watermelon socks, I did the intended number of repeats that the pattern calls for. I have used these BFL nylon ones more, and they're holding up quite well. But it's still, even when I first put them on, it was much baggier than the watermelon socks. And that is due to not only the gauge, but the yarn was bouncier than the merino nylon which I used for the watermelon sock and consequently my stitches were bigger if that makes sense so even though I followed the same instructions and I used the same hook size the yarn being different just made a different sock so that's also something to keep in mind when you're crocheting socks. If you're using a different yarn, which you most likely will be, um, even if your gauge is right, you should still uh, pay close attention to your measurements. So my end thing with crochet socks is, yes, they can be very finicky, but they are so fun to make and they're fun to wear. If you have knit socks before, you probably won't think that crochet socks are that fun to wear because they, they are a different feel than knitted socks. But uh, you can use them as house slippers and they make much faster house slippers than knitted ones, that's for sure. And as long as you have a person's, person's measurements, you can crochet them a sock. My recommendation, my advice is to always make the sock toe up because you can try it on as you're crocheting and you can gauge how well it, it'll fit and how well it won't fit. Now, I just wanted to touch on a little um, kind of hint of advice for some crochet socks. So the last socks I designed were the Endor Moon sock pattern and this one's really short and really thin. And it's a lot thinner than my usual crochet socks because of the stitches that I use. The squished single crochet stitch is essentially a um, single crochet decrease worked over two stitches with a chain one to count for that second stitch that you decrease. So it, ha it gives the sock a much lighter, not lighter, skinnier look. But then I did a mini gusset on it because you want to have some space. The sock was fitting too perfect, so I knew that it needed to have some give to go over the end step. Now, if you have um, prob um, a higher arch, you'll probably need more space across your end step, and this, um, the amount of increases that I made might not be good for you, so what can you do? You can add more increases to the gusset or you could increase your hook size when you are working over the heel stitches and when you've joined the sock and you're working your heel stitches into the sock to create the, the leg. That also works really well. And sometimes if your gauge is too tight, 
you would probably need to do both increase your hook size as well as your number of stitches but those are just things that come with a lot of crochet sock experimentation I'm just holding a huge bundle of crochet socks here they're just none of them are pairs but they're just socks that I've made and use on a regular basis I typically tend to divide my socks and house socks and outdoor socks you know but I hope that I was able to explain crochet socks well to you and if you still have any questions you can feel free to message me shoot me an email comment on my blog send me a message through my blog read my blog post if you have any other questions I have written several blog posts that have to deal with socks and crochet socks so I will link those below if you are interested but I just uh, I want to thank you for the people who commented saying that yes they would want to learn a little bit more about crochet socks and just thank you to everybody that comments in general and anybody that's new to this channel thank you so much for hitting the subscribe button and if you're following me on instagram and you're a new follower then thank you so much for checking out my instagram feed i have been having a lot of fun on there and just um please keep safe and i hope that your crafting if you're able to craft has been bringing you joy I have been working on other projects. I've been working on my second version of the Summer Fan Top. And now that I've finished my blanket, I will begin working once again on my 60s shift dress design, which I'm very excited about. And <laughs> I know I've gushed about that yarn, but it is so perfect. That is so perfect. Well, thank you guys for just having a little bit of a chat with me today. I hope that you enjoyed today's podcast and feel free to check out my blog for any future updates. I have a stitch, stitch tutorial coming up. I have the blanket pattern, I have a basket pattern, and I have some other patterns that I'm dying to get my hands on, but I'm trying to take it a little bit monogamously because seriously, having three patterns on the go it was fun but it gets to the point where you really just want to get them out there even if you're having fun because it's content and you're dying to share it I know I was dying to share this finished blanket with you guys so yeah uh, stay tuned I will catch up with you in two weeks time who knows where I'll be then like I said just taking it one day at a time and I hope that you are in a position where you can also take it one day at a time. And if you're not, just please remember to breathe. So thank you so much for tuning into today's podcast and happy crafting. Bye.